think of what is a business development company, BDCs were actually created by Congress to try to get capital flowing to private US businesses. They wanted to stimulate Main Street. So if you're a BDC and you make a loan to a private US business and you pay that all out as a dividend, you pay no federal taxes. So it's similar to a REIT structure. Um, and so what we have in our portfolio is essentially a portfolio of corporate loans to private US businesses. And they, again, take that interest income off the portfolio and pay it out to us. And so what we have on kind of the upper right-hand corner of the BDC portfolio statistics, what we did is we took the stocks that we own in the Lippman Gregory Fund. We said, if you look through that portfolio, what do you actually own in our companies? And so with that, we, we have exposure to $32 billion of loans and almost 1,400 middle market credits. These are private credits, um, not liquid. A uh, vast majority, 90% floating rate. And you can see over 50% of the portfolio's first lien investments with a mix there of first, second, junior debt, and some equity in the portfolio. And what's nice about the BDCs is we have significant transparency into their portfolio. So unlike a bank, when you look at their financial statement and they have commercial, commercial loans and it's just a number, that's all you get. With the BDCs, we actually get every single investment they make. We get information about those loans. So we have significant detail of what's in their portfolio and they fair market value all of those assets every quarter. So we get real time information on what's going on in their portfolio. So uh, our view is, um, you know, if you're able to do the work um, and, and have the expertise, you can dig in and really understand what's going on from a credit perspective um, in these uh, corporate bond portfolios. Um, the, the BDCs have very high income. Again, they pay it all out as a dividend. So we've got about a 9.5% dividend yield on average um, with solid dividend coverage from that. Um, and you know, we actually see some regulatory changes that are providing some tailwinds for the BDCs that we think are going to increase um, uh, potential increase earnings and dividends and maybe bring some institutional investors back into the space. BDCs are not included in any indexes, so we don't have any passive flows you know, making their ways to the BDCs. And down at the bottom, you know, historically at book value, if you can buy them below book value, has historically been a good price, and particularly when you get those periods of volatility. Can you give an example of the, uh, where the uh, BDCs are lending geographically and the types of businesses they're lending to? Yeah, so from a geographic standpoint, they're all over the United States. So you know, we have the, the BDC industry as a whole is 50 BDCs with almost $100 billion of assets that are invested in US public companies. So geographically, it's all over the United States. Um, also, from an industry diversification, every BDC is a little bit different, but it's broadly um, diversified uh, on an industry basis. Um, so, you know, you have anything from, you know, uh, IT software to industrials um, to manufacturing. Um, you know, it, it, it's really a, a very diverse portfolio from an industry perspective as well. Can you talk a little bit about the internal costs within the BDC for making the loans, playing banker, so to speak, and their own internal leverage, and whether the BDC investor with getting a 8 or 10 percent payout mm -hmm. is actually being adequately compensated relative to the sort of gross cost-free yield that would be up in the teens, potentially? Yeah. So, um, so for, from a BDC perspective, because they're investing in kind of that private direct lending um, you know, get significant yield enhancements that you get over the liquid credit market. So the average yield inside the, the BDC portfolio, the, the yield that they're charging to the end business, you know, is typically a 95 to 10% yield. Um, so again, probably 400 basis points that you get over a liquid, you know, high yield. And again, as you can see there that I had in the slide, a lot of them are, are first lean you know, portfolio yields secured, you know, by the assets versus high yield bond completely un unsecured. And what we have seen historically is that loss rates have been superior in that, those private credit markets. So I think they generate higher risk adjusted returns, you know, for that. Um, you know, they, they do have higher expense structures than say, you know, a, a high yield bond portfolio would charge. Um, but ultimately, we think that the, the risk-adjusted returns um, you know, that they are able to generate 
adequately compensate you know, for, for those returns. Um, in addition, they have leverage that they utilize. One of the potential um, tailwinds for the BDC space is Congress just increased the maximum leverage ratio for BDC. So it used to be a BDC couldn't lever its portfolio more than one to one debt to equity. Um, Congress just passed a law that allowed them to go to two to one. We're, we're still just starting that process. And in fact, if there is a market dislocation, the BDCs actually have dry powder um, to take advantage of that with the increased you know, leverage limitations. Um, but I think that can be a driver of growth over the next several years um, as they can take advantage of that potential you know, additional leverage in their portfolio. Interesting, when we're talking to the BDC managers, um, being pretty big investors in that space, you know, we're, we're telling them, Let's, you don't need to ramp up your leverage now. We're fine with the yields. Have that dry powder so that if we have a recession or a dislocation in the equity markets, that they can take advantage of that and go on the offense. 